Father, we thank you for the privilege and honor to be here. Father, I know that I know many, but I don't know every person this morning under the sound of my voice, and you do. Even if I know them, Father, I don't know the specifics of what they're going through. I don't know the specifics of what they're facing this morning, but you do. And Father, yes, it's Easter, and it's important extremely. But Father, this day, we must be led by the Spirit of God. And Father, I just yield myself now to be that vessel that you call me to be this Easter morning. And I thank you this morning that the Holy Spirit's going to give me what to say, when to say, and how to say. It's not going to be man's plans, thoughts, or ideas, because they'll change no one and set nobody free. We know that this is the truth, and the truth alone, that will set us free. So I thank you now. The words that come forth are going to be your words, anointed by your Spirit. And it's going to be received by faith by your people that sit in this place today. Yes. We thank you, Father. They're going to receive this word. They're going to apply this word. They're going to act on it. And their lives are going to be changed, challenged, and altered forever. And most importantly, this morning, everything that we say and do in this place is going to give you the glory, yes. the honor, and the praise that you so deserve. We say now, have your way in our lives in this place. And we give you that praise right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated at this time. This message this morning is, as I said, now if, you're not, if you don't remember what wasn't here, you wouldn't know the difference. This is going to be completely different than the messages that I usually would minister on Easter. We minister about the blood covenant and a lot of things and bring it to you know, basic everyday terms that will help you. But as I was preparing for this message, studying and praying and seeking God's face, the Lord said, this is the title that He gave me, if you're taking notes or it'll be on the CD, it's obviously Easter, but the title that He gave me was this. He said, the value of a soul. The value of a soul. Do you know this morning that you matter? You matter to God. Amen? You matter to us as well. You matter to other people. But the Holy Spirit told me this. He said, there's people that are in your congregation. There's people that have come in or are sitting there that they don't believe they matter anymore. They don't believe they have anything to offer anymore. And even though there's people around them, they don't believe, they believe that it'd be better off if they wasn't even here. But did you know this morning, God has a plan. God has a purpose. And if you still have breath in your body this morning, it's the truth from His Word that your best days are yet ahead of you. Amen? I was sitting, and I've said this before, some may have heard, some not. Because even in church, even in ministry, getting dressed up, doing what all we do at church and all that kind of stuff, and some of us fine, some of us just religious tradition that doesn't mean very much. But, but we end up going through the motions. I was sitting at a restaurant, and I had my baby, she's nine now. She's probably six, seven, eight then, six, seven or so. I was sitting at a restaurant. I'm echoing real bad up there. I don't know what's going on. But I was sitting at a restaurant, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. She's sitting across the, the, the way there, sitting across the table. She's sitting over there eating her Lay's potato chips. And she's just sitting there, minding her own, own business, you know. just She was looking out the window, you know how children are, just innocent. She was looking out the window, sitting across the table. She really wasn't paying attention to us. She was just sitting there, just innocent as she could be, looking out the window, eating her potato chips, and, and the Holy Spirit having to look at her. And he said, what if nobody cared about her? He said, what if nobody cared about her? Now, he didn't have to say anything else to me because I already knew what he meant. He said, don't forget the reason I called you to do what I called you to do. Don't forget what really matters. We do a lot of things, but I'll tell you, what really matters is pleasing God and loving people. Amen. Pleasing God and helping people. Amen? Not having church, but being the church. You matter, and I matter to God. He's got a plan for you, he's got a plan for me, a purpose for you, and a purpose for me. And I want you to know, before you leave here in this, pla this place today, in the Word of God, that you matter. God values every single one of you. And Easter we celebrate that He was willing to give His only Son to die so that you and I can have life and life eternal. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at John chapter 3. Many of you know this. We're going to read it anyway. John chapter 3 verse 16. We're going to talk just a little bit. We'll take communion before we leave. But we're going to talk about the value of a soul this morning. John chapter 3 verse 16. We'll start there. Read a couple three. 
we see in John chapter 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We see there among others, but in verse 18, the whole world was already condemned. Amen? And we're going to put a lot of big things in a nutshell this morning, because we're not rushing, but only have some much time. You know, when Adam sinned, who did it affect? Just Adam, just Eve, just their children? No. It affected every one of us when he sinned because God had given Adam dominion over all the earth when he transgressed and ate of the tree that he wasn't supposed to, the fruit of the tree. What happened? You can write it down in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 14. Sin passed upon every man. How did I become a sinner? Myself. But I was really born into it. I became a sinner the same way I became a Wallace. My last name is Wallace. People say, well, I've done good. I haven't done anything wrong. You don't get to heaven because you've done good or bad. Amen. You get to heaven because you made Jesus your Lord, Lord and Savior. Your yeah, Amen. Amen. Now, when you truly make him Lord and Savior, it'll affect your actions, right? It'll affect your behavior. That's true as well. But it's not our good works that get us to heaven. It's putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So there was no hope. And as Marlene was telling the, you know, talking about Mackenzie, she's got on this kick recently. I don't know why, but about Adam and Eve and how she had such a problem, you know, with Adam and Eve and she's got no use for them and they should be in hell and all kind of stuff. And, you know, I mean, just really has got to be for Adam and Eve. I think they might have started out in the whole story in Sunday school that she had got to, we got an answer for Adam and Eve's problem. Right. His name is Jesus. Amen. Jesus came to make everything right that Adam and Eve messed up in the garden. So if we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we're going to be all right. Amen? Yeah, amen. So uh, after, after Adam sinned, though, every man was born into sin. So there was need of a Savior, but there was no Savior. There was no hope. Why? Who qualified? He had to be perfect. Had to be sinless, sacrifice. But every man was born into sin upon the earth, so there was no hope whatsoever. We were separated from God and destined for eternal separation. Now there in verse 17, we see... For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That wasn't the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? But that the world through him might be saved. He didn't send Jesus to condemn us. We were already condemned. He sent Jesus to save us. Now why did he do all of this? It's in verse 16. It says, for God so... Verse 16 says... Now I don't, I'm not one of these pastors. I've been a lot of times... Been in churches in the past where I have you repeat things 15 times, and it makes me feel like I'm three years old sometimes. I don't, I don't usually do that, but I would like for you to repeat something with me one, one time this morning, and it would benefit you if you'd say it to yourself daily. Say, God, God loves, loves me. me. Now, every day, every time you get down and out and feel like you got no reason to praise God or shout, when you wake up in the morning, you know, sometimes people get the mentality, well, I just like to look so-and-so eyeball to eyeball and tell them what I think so I can get them straightened out. We need to look ourselves eyeball to eyeball and speak the Word of God so we can get ourselves straightened out. Of course, God help and we're cooperating with God. Amen? You say, I feel like nothing. Well, you're not a nobody because you feel like it. You're not worthless because you feel like it. You're not ever going to amount to nothing because you feel like it. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do, and I'm going to be who God said I'm going to be. Amen? But I'm going to have to put my trust and faith in Him. If I look at myself, yes, I may feel like a nobody. Honestly, legitimately in this life, you may legitimately, worldwide, people looking at you would say they're worthless. But in God's eyes, you're not worthless. In God's eyes, you're not a nobody. In God's eyes, you matter. And you matter enough, and He loved you enough to give Jesus. His only begotten Son to die so that you can have life and life eternal. Yes. Yes. For the Christian, the worst thing that can happen to you, the worst thing, not the best, is that you die and go to heaven. People think that's the best. No, you can have some days of heaven on earth and live out your life here on the earth and do everything that gives glory to God. Then you decide with God and leave 
then you go to heaven and we're going to have a good time there as well. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So I'm just going to go now. You can go now, but that don't mean it's God's best. Let's enjoy what God, God's got for us now. Amen? Amen. Let's make a difference. Give glory to God. We looked at that yeah, Matthew, what, Matthew 5 or so on uh, <coughs> Thursday night, but we're not going back there. Amen? God did not send Jesus to condemn us. God loves us. We're celebrating this weekend for one reason. Jesus was born. We know that he died. He was crucified. The worst death they could die. He was crucified. And the fact that he was sinless should give us a revelation that he didn't die for anything that he did. Amen. He didn't die for himself. Amen. Amen. What the other guys up there, at least one of them said, hey, you need to shut your mouth and tell the other guy because he, we're up here because of what we did. Right. This guy didn't do anything to be up here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus did not die for Jesus. Right. He died for you. Yes. And he did it because of one reason, for God so loved. It doesn't matter how low you feel when you get and you begin to meditate and get a revelation. Because see, the devil will tell you nobody loves you. You're never going to amount to nothing. You don't matter. But see, God never said that. Amen? And if you get, he'll get you to depart from the Word of God, depart from good Christian fellowship, depart from people that will build you up, and you won't hear it, you won't even know what you're saying or doing, but you're siding in with the devil when you get negative to defeat yourself. You need to know what God said. God said, I'm more than a conqueror. He said, I'm somebody. He loved me enough. The Bible says he had a plan for me before I was ever formed in my mother's womb. And the plan that God had for me is one of success and not failure. To prosper me and not to harm me. Amen? Yes. Yes, amen? I would say I don't know about you, but I do know about you. You're a success going somewhere to happen. You're not a failure. You're not an underachiever. The Word says you're more than a conqueror. Amen? Jesus didn't die. Sometimes in the church today, you get them, you know, and I'm sure it's going on this morning, but I'm not here to judge any other pastor in the church, but I'm sure it's going on. And sometimes we feel like, well, the lower we can get down, humility is a good thing. But talking about how bad everything is and I, I, this is going on and that's going on and all the devil's doing to you and all the devil's doing to me, that didn't glorify God. It brings reproach on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. No matter what he brings, no matter the mountain, no matter the valley, we're going over, under, through, whatever needs to be done, but we've got the victory through our Lord and yeah, Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. We need to remember that they crucified him and they went back on the third day. The devil might have thought that he won, but they went back. What they say, why well, seek you the living? Among the dead. And today the same spirit that's quickened and made alive. That raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Has quickened and made our spirits alive. And if any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. I might have used to have the nature of a failure. But now my nature is one of success. I might have been defeated. But now I'm an overachiever. Amen. I'm not going under. We're going over. I said we're going over. Some of you need to tell yourself that. Thank you. Some of you need to tell yourself that yes, I do matter. Everything. One of the things that's going to happen as I continue to preach this morning is some of you's not going to get happy. You'll get plumb mad before you leave. <coughs> you ain't going to be mad at me. But you get plumb mad before you leave because you're going to realize how much you've been listening to the devil yes. and not God. Oh yeah. yeah. That's what the word does. See, the word is light. And we take the word of God and we expose. We shine a light on what Satan's been doing and expose his, what he's been doing, his deception and his lies. And then what do we do? We take authority, amen, and put him in his place. So we know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? Yes. God loves you and God loves me. And even this morning, he's still dealing with your heart for a reason. Yes. Just the fact, I say this regularly, but it's true. People say there's no purpose. There's why I must go. There, there's hope for you. Just the fact that you got breath in your body. God's brought you this far. Even if you struggle, no matter what, you're still here. Amen. Yes, amen. You're still here. Yes. That's right. And you're still here for a reason. That's right. Amen. Right? God loves you and he loves me more than we could ever think or imagine. I want you to go to Luke chapter 15 was where I wanted to get anyways. But Luke chapter 15 was, does the Lord give me the value of a soul being the title? <coughs> he told me, I want you to go read this. And again, I think it's the first time I ever ministered along these lines. Well, on Easter, but it's not it's not relevant. It's, it's, what's relevant is to be obedient. Right? Amen. Do you know that God loves you so much this morning that he gave Jesus to die? Yes. It was only to save one of you. Yes. God loves you. Yes. God's for you. 
I think it's, it's, a, it's I'm a big, big, I believe one of the things the church has lost uh, it is being obedient. It is, is endeavoring to live according to the word of God. We believe that real big here. But, but we do, we, we, we preach and teach differently than a lot of people do. We're not being obedient and living right because we're scared to death. We're being obedient and living right because God set his love upon us. Yeah. When we were separated from God and we had no hope, we had no way, we had no future, God loved us enough to give his only begotten son to die so that we could live to pay the ultimate price. We're not, we're not obeying God. We're not being good little Christians because we're scared to death we're going to hell. We're obeying God and doing, we're, what, doing what we're supposed to do and being witnesses and testimonies for him because he first chose us. Yeah. He first loved us. He set his love upon you and me. And just like, see, man will fail you very often. The word says that even if we're unfaithful, God is still faithful. God, we, we get a mentality. We get way off over here and way off over there. And we think God has changed when in all reality, we might have changed. God has never changed. He's still the same God that answered your prayers many years ago. He'll still answer your prayers today. He's never changed. Same God that brought you through everything that he brought you through, whether it was yesterday or whether it was years ago, he's the same God that will still put you over. Yeah. He had not changed. Amen. I've been there and you've been there where we might have changed, but God had not changed. His love, the Bible says, if it's true and we believe it, Romans chapter 8 tells us, among many other things, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. How much does that leave out? You say, well, I failed. God don't agree with sin, but he still loves you. You still take you back. You know, I've been there numerous times. <coughs> sin and messed up so bad, you take the mentality. And, and as I said recently, you know, I used to pray. And I would say, God, I know you love me because if I was you, I'd have gave up on me a long time ago. I wouldn't have messed with me anymore. But the Lord's taught me some things since then. And the Lord taught me that he's not me, but that he's God. Amen. And he doesn't respond and react like me. And he's not moved by his emotions or his feelings. Okay. He's definitely not moved by sin. Amen? And he let me know one thing, because I'd always make that statement, God, if I was you, I'd have gave up on me a long time ago. And he reminded me, he said, yes, but I'm not like you, especially in that area. And I'm trying to be more like him every day. But he said, my love never changes. I don't change whether you stay the same or whether me run off here, run off there, be obedient or disobedient. God's still the same. Yes. He never changes. He's not, the, he's not any different this Easter Sunday than he was last Easter Sunday. Amen. A hundred years ago or two thousand years ago, God is still God. Yes, Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 15, <laughs> verse 1. Then drew near unto him, talking about Jesus, all the public and the sinners forth to hear him. And, and the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So what was what were the Pharisees and what were the scribes crying about? What well, tells you right there? They were crying about who he's spending his time with. Yes. They're crying about who he's sitting and eating with. You're eating with these ranked publicans, these ranked sinners, and what, they, what they're saying is this, you're eating with these nobodies and these less than the society. Mm -hmm. See, what they didn't understand is there's no such a person with Jesus. Amen. There are no less thans. You say, well, I know people. I do too. I know people that's run off and absolutely obliterated their life. I do. They've sided in with the devil, and they may be in a worse place today than they've ever been before. But all they got to do is repent. Amen. They repent. See, we don't understand the love of God that you might be here this morning in your nice dress, nice suit, whatever you're wearing, or honestly, it doesn't even matter what you're wearing, and God loves the man under the bridge this morning homeless, drunk, made a terrible decision to put himself there. We don't understand that naturally, but God loves that man just as much as he does me. He loves him just the same. And who are we representing in the earth? We represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He doesn't see things like we do. But as we put on the mind of Christ, we will. The scribes and the Pharisees, it's not the first time. They did this all the time. But they're, and, and, and this, these next phrases, these next little short parables that we're going to read, he's trying to explain to them, and he's, what's he say? You don't even realize what I'm here for. What, what is it, Luke 19, 10? Jesus himself said, he said he came to seek and save the lost. That's his purpose. And then Luke 4 and we know, he talked further about his mission. But he said, I came to seek and save those that were lost. Now go down to verse 3. We're going to look at the parable of the lost sheep. And it says, 
And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Verse 7, I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. See, they're casting them away. What's Jesus, what's he reminding them of? I came to save them. I came for that very purpose. He's telling them, you really don't even know what you're talking about. I'll throw in a little cheap shot by the Holy Ghost. That's what's wrong in the church today. That you, we don't even know what we're here for. We're here to fulfill the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To seek and save those that was lost. You say it's about the music, it's about the greeters, it's about what you wear. It's about the date you take communion on. It's about Jesus is what it's about. Amen. And if we're sharing the love of God and telling people about the Lord, he said, if I be lifted up, Jesus did, I'll draw them into me. Yes. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Amen? Mm -hmm. yes. He said, I say unto you that likewise, verse 7, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons, which need no repentance. So he, he's responding to these Pharisees who are, are murmuring. And, and you got the shepherd with a hundred sheep. And how many of them's lost? How many of them runs off? One. Just got one that, that's gone. And, and what does a shepherd do? You know, Jesus is the great shepherd. Yeah. He's the chief shepherd. You got one runs off out of these 99. One of them's lost. And Jesus leaves the 99 to go see one. one. Why? Because all hundred of them matter. But the others are right where they're supposed to be, right? They're in the care of the shepherd. Obviously, he could have other shepherds that were there as well to take care of them. But that one, that one that's going astray, that one that's lost for whatever reason, Jesus said any good shepherd will leave the flock and go see that. How many of you this morning? And who told you you don't matter? Because you do. Amen? He goes after that. He seeks the lost. And we see he brings it back home, Right? That's the purpose. He celebrates the finding and returning of this lost sheep to the flock in verse 6. And many would say, well, what about my time of rejoicing? What about my time of, of celebration? Well, every single one of those ones that were brought into the flock that were lost, they had their time of rejoicing. This one that lost is the focus. The good shepherd goes after the lost sheep. Amen? Why? For God so loved. Because no matter how lost you feel today. Maybe you got lost unintentionally. Maybe you're like the prodigal son. We'll look at briefly in a minute. Maybe you run off and took your own journey. There's somebody's love that you've not outrun. That's right. There's somebody's grasp that you've not outrun. I'm preaching this morning. Got my suit on all that good stuff. Uh, you know that's great. But for many years I wasn't in church. Knew better. But I wasn't in church. Running as hard as I could living for the devil, all these sorts of things. And I do thank God for the people around me that didn't compromise. I thank God for them and their prayers. But I'll tell you, you never run, outrun God, I should say. Yes. You never outrun God. You never, you get in a place sometimes and you feel like, again, I can't, I, I feel like this morning that I'm ministering by the Spirit of God. If I had one statement that I've got to make in this church today is that you came in here and you would make the statement, if you wouldn't say it to anybody but yourself, you would make this statement that I don't matter. And God would say this morning to you, you are wrong because you matter to Him. If you didn't get anything else out of everything that's been said and what I say this morning, that's what God is saying. You do matter. Yes. His love has not changed towards you. And again, very often we think it has because many other people may misrepresent God. Maybe just your own thoughts or the thoughts the enemy brings you. You're worthless, you're no good, you're a failure and all these sorts of things. And he'll get you to side in with the wrong thoughts which come from the enemy. Satan who's Doing what? What's he endeavor to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. Looking, who, looking for whoever he may devour, right? As a roaring lion, he'll, he'll get you to think all these things, and before you know it, you're disqualifying yourself from contributing in any way, shape, form, or fashion, and he's got you convinced, and you bought a lie that you don't matter. But he said this morning, you do matter, and if you were the only one, Jesus would have died, and if you're the only one today that's going astray and we're lost, Jesus out of his love would go after you. 
Amen? Yes, amen. <clears throat> so they're rejoicing. <clears throat> and going down a little bit further, verse 8. Either, this is the parable of the lost coin. Either what a woman, either what woman, excuse me, having ten pieces of silver, if she lost one piece, so she's got ten and lost how many? Doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And, and when, when she had found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Now you got you got these parables, and he spoke in parables at this time so they could try to understand, right? It was his purpose as he's teaching through telling them the, the, these stories in parables. Because he's saying anybody would understand this. You got a lost sheep, you're going to go find it, right? You lose this coin, which was I think was about a day's wages, you're going to search for this thing. He said, this is what I'm here for. I'm to seek and save the lost. I'm to heal the broken heart, right? Saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repent. One person makes Jesus Lord and Savior of their life. One person comes back to God the Father, rededicates their life to God. The angels rejoice in heaven. You got this woman, and back in the days, you know, you say, well, what's the big deal? You drop a coin on the floor. Well, believe it or not, back in those days, they didn't have floors like we have today. It was either one or two things. It was not a perfect dirt floor, but dirt or clay, or either they would have the little bit better houses, they would have stone floors. And you can imagine, with the stone floors, there was, again, it wasn't like today, and there would be, it falls in one of these cracks. Well, it wasn't easy to find. But it says that she searched how? Diligently. The same way that God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ pursues you and me. Amen. Diligently. It doesn't matter what kind of crack that you feel like you're down in and that there's no hope, no way out, no reason to give God the glory and shout today. God is in hot pursuit of you. Yes, yes He is. Amen? Yes. God loves you. And, and, and again, I've had people, it was about money, but I had somebody one time to come and, and was talking to me and they... they it wasn't disrespectful towards me, but they were just upset their situation. And they threw their, their checkbook up on the table and they were struggling financially. It's because of their decision, but they were they were struggling financially. And they said, I know what you're preaching and teaching. I know what we're praying about, but I need God to give me a sign. I need God to give me a sign. And it, it just hit me immediately. And I said, you don't need any. He can't give you any greater sign than he's already given you. God has no greater sign to give you and I that he's for us and not against us. Yeah. That he loves us. He has no greater sign. He's already given us the greatest gift he could possibly give us. And that's his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He has nothing greater. Amen? Amen? So she's looking and she's, she's searching diligently. Now maybe today, maybe you've been even where I've been at times. You said, I, I, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't have any doubt whether God's real and all those sorts of things. Yeah, but maybe you are not where you need to be. And maybe today you are one that is not pursuing God any longer. You have disqualified yourself and you say, I don't matter. Now, I'm going to say this emphatically. You might not have said this to everybody else. I'm not preaching this message because some of your family and friends have come and told me something. I pray and see God do what the Holy Spirit says. So maybe you're here this morning and you've told nobody this. And you say, well, that can't be me because I've told nobody there's somebody that knows everything about you. That's right. And it's God. Amen? Amen. Let's go just a little bit further. Because <clears throat> we got now, we got the prodigal son. All of these go together. And, and in the prodigal son, we see in verse 11, a certain man had two sons. And we got the, the younger of them, what did he want? He said, Father, go ahead and give me my inheritance. The portion of my goods now, if you go down to verse 13, what did the younger son do? The older one stayed home and continued doing his work. The younger one, it says, took his journey. He did what he wanted to do. Now, maybe not all of y'all, uh, but most of y'all, if you tell the truth about it, and I can say for myself, there's been times in our life we took our own journey. We did, People say, well, why'd you do what you did? You want the truth or a lie? <laughs> you did it because you wanted to. That's why you did it. Amen? It don't make it right. Get a lot of excuses sometimes, but he didn't say confess your excuses or mistakes. He said, be honest. He said, confess your sins and I'll be faithful and just for you and cleanse you. So he took his journey, right? And then in verse 14, 
No, we know he took his journey to the 13th, and there he wasted in the far country. He wasted it with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. See, the devil, when you follow his plan, he will set you up. And some of you know this from personal experience. He will set you up and tell you, just like he did with Adam and Eve in the beginning. See, he's not using any new tricks. You say, oh, it's going to be better than it's ever been. What did he tell Adam and Eve? If you leave that fruit, the fruit of that tree, the reason God don't want you to is because if you eat of that fruit, he knows you're going to be like him. You're going to be as God's. Right? Don't buy the lie that the devil sells you. He began to be in want. He went and joined himself when 15, joined himself up to a citizen of that country. He sent him into the field to feed the swine. And he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. What kind of situation did he get in? The worst one he could get in for a man of his stature and coming for his family. He ended up legitimate. And really, in reality, the big pen of life. Right? He had it made at father's house. He already had it made, but he decided to go off and do his own thing. Go ahead and get this inheritance. Let's have a good time. This is, I say regularly, people say, I'm young. Oh, and i got to sow my wild oats. Yeah, the devil don't tell you anything about reaping that harvest, though. Amen. That's the problem. Amen. Does without true repentance, that's coming as well. Verse 17, and when he came to himself, it's a good thing. When he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, what's going on here? He realized what he'd done. Right? I'll arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So this son is going back home. He said, I'm going to go tell my father I've made a mess of my life. I'm not even worthy to be called a son, but my Lord, doing anything at your house. It's better than this pig pen out here in this country that I've gone to. Yeah. Right? In the middle of this family. You see that. <clears throat> in verse 20, he did it. He went home. He arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and are no more worthy to be called thy son. What's he doing? He's saying, because of what I've done. This is Jesus and God today. Because of what I've done, I don't qualify. You don't qualify because of yourself anyways. You don't qualify because of what you've done or what you've not done. You qualify because of the blood of Jesus that was shed for you and me. Yes. Amen? You hear in the church a lot of people over and over and over. I'm not worthy. You'll never be worthy because of anything you do. You're worthy because of what Jesus has done. Yes. Amen? You never have been nor never, never will be worthy. People sometimes get caught up in building their self up. We need to build Jesus up because you're not going to build yourself up as a lie anyways. Yeah. Amen? So, this father, we would like to say this. This father's the patriarch of the family. He's got on all this everything and dressed to the nine, dressed to the T. It was very uh, not patriot, however you would say it. It was not the right thing for him to do to take off running, but he didn't care. He didn't care what anybody thought because his son's coming home. And this one and all son, this gone and done all of these things, who's got his head down, again, I, 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 he's made this mess. You may sit here this morning and say, I've made this mess. I've got to fix it. If you could fix it by yourself, if you could clean your own self up, you wouldn't need Jesus to begin with. You can't straighten your own mess out. Amen? I had somebody up on crack cocaine and, and he got away from church and he got delivered and was living right for a little while. I've told this story numerous times. I mean, he thought the world of me and I, I still still feel the same way back in church now. But he was strung out. I mean, big time strung out. And, and he, I didn't see him for a little while. And, and check it on him, that kind of stuff as his pastor. Make a long story short, he had, he had allowed a woman to move in with him. That was another one of his problems. He had a woman move in with him that wasn't his wife. I don't think he was divorced from his wife. And he said, Pastor, he said, she come in. And he said, I'm not blaming her. He said, but you know, that's what I used to do before. Started doing crack cocaine among many other drugs. And then he said, Pastor, I know that I'm wrong. And I know that God wanted me to call you today. And I know that you can help me. And, and he said, but I, I just wanted you to know where I'm at. I'm endeavoring to get things right. And he said, just as soon as I get it right, I'm going to get back to church. Just as soon as I get straightened out, I'm going to get back to church. And I called his name and I said, listen, 
I said, you couldn't be any more wrong. I, he's, I said, he's a good country boy too. You talk to him just as straight as anybody. And I said, you couldn't be any more wrong. And I called his name. I said, you cannot get straightened out and then come to church. I said, you need to be at church the next time the doors open up. If you could clean yourself up and straighten your own self up, you wouldn't need Jesus. That's right. Amen? You need all the help you can get. And I'm here this morning to tell you, help was available. Yeah. So this father comes home, excuse me, this son comes home, what they did? What they do? What they did. What did they do? The father said to his servants, bring forth the, the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us see them be married. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be married. Do you see that? Yeah. What state is your life this morning? What state is your heart this morning? How close or far away are you from the one that really matters? Amen? Is Jesus Lord and Savior of your life? And as you look through these parables, I'm not going back through all of them. One of the things that, that we could say that Jesus saw as he's defended his ministry here to the scribes and the Pharisees, he saw what they were. This morning, he sees what you are. He sees you just like you are. There's nothing hidden. Nothing. Amen? He saw the sheep that was going astray and needed a shepherd to bring them home. He saw the lost coins stamped with the image of God needing to get back into circulation again. There's people in here, you need to get back to circulation again. Yes. Amen? Amen? He saw the disobedient sons who were wasting their inheritance and needed to come home to the Father. He also, not only did he see what they were, he saw how they got there. Even the disobedient son that needed to learn from, from his mistakes. But lastly, Jesus saw what they could be. You know, it's good to have somebody that believes in you when you get to a place sometimes you don't even believe in yourself. That you feel like you don't matter, worthless, no value. God's never changed. Nothing separates you from the love of God. Nothing. And there are some of you today that you need by your own decision and exercising your faith, you need to be put back into circulation, so to speak. And the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit is here to do that. I want my singers to come and my band to come. You guys, y'all stay seated. This is for salvation, obviously. These scriptures, Romans 10, 9, and 10. But everything in your life starts with Jesus first. This morning, we want to be clear. And this isn't the only thing I'm going to pray for you about. But I want to be just as clear as possible, and this is one of those deals. You say, well, Pastor, I don't believe you. And don't change the truth, whether you believe me or not. Pastor, I don't like what you say. Doesn't mean it's not true. There is a heaven to gain. And there's a hell to shun. Thank God that He loved us so much that He gave Jesus to die so we could live. Adam and Eve messed it up, but Jesus came. If you want to read something, you get on to the help you. Go read the whole Romans chapter five. The whole thing help you. But Jesus came to make what Adam messed up right. We got access today. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. We got access to the Father, but there's only one way. And his name is Jesus. Every person that sits in this room today, if you were to take your last breath right now, you're going to one of two places. You're going to spend eternity in heaven, or you're going to spend eternity in hell. Amen? And what's going to make the difference is whether you've done the scripture or not. And of course, we want to live it out afterwards. But verse 9 of Romans 10 said that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. Verse 13 says, For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible also says, Whoever comes to him, he'll in no wise cast out. So you say, Well, I'm worthless and I don't qualify. You do qualify. You have breath in your body, there's still hope for your life. But that hope is only in one person. Not one thing, one person. His name is Jesus. Amen? His name is Jesus. So this is what I want to do. This is completely different, but I'm going to do it anyways. And I'll ask you something else when you get up here. You said, I'm already saved, that's fine. I'm going to ask you when you get up here. 
Just say, right now, you're in this place, and you have no doubt whatsoever. Everybody close their eyes. You have no doubt whatsoever that this message was for you. This message ministered to you. Whether you've never made Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, or whether you would say, absolutely, this is the way that I have felt. What you have said today has ministered to me, and I have felt like I don't matter. Like I have not been in circulation. Like I have not been contributing in any way, shape, form, or fashion, and maybe even felt worthless. If that is you today, and you say, yes, Pastor, without a doubt, this message has ministered to me, at that point, I want you to boldly slip your hand up. And I know that there's many people. There's not one. There's many people, yes. I see hands. Slip your hand up. Anybody in the place. You say, yes, that is me. Now, this is what we're going to do. And I don't care if you raise your hand or not, you're still welcome to come to the altar. This is what we're going to do. They're going to sing, and they're going to, we're going to worship God. Everybody can stand. 